Y'all, let's get right into talking about LinkedIn in 2023 because it is popping off. If you are upset with Instagram and their attempt to try to be TikTok, or if you're tired of fighting for attention on Facebook, LinkedIn may be the platform for you, especially for those of you who are B2B or B2E business owners. So that's business to business or business to entrepreneur. If you work with other business owners, you got to be on LinkedIn. I even have some tips for how to use LinkedIn if you're a direct to consumer business professional. I got you. In this episode, I'm sharing with you some of my favorite LinkedIn tips and tricks, what's coming down the pipeline for 2023, and how you can best use LinkedIn as a tool to grow your business. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Savvy Social Podcast, the show that blends stories and strategies to help businesses create engaged and profitable online communities using the unique power of social media. And now your host, Andrea Jones. So over the past few years, I've really noticed my clients and customers getting some amazing results on LinkedIn. They're actually posting less and getting better results. They're really connecting with quality people. Um, They've left those vanity metrics behind. We're really focusing on quality here over quantity. And they're actually having dynamic conversations with potential clients, collaboration partners. And this is all because of LinkedIn. It is one of my personal favorite platforms because I actually don't have to put a ton of energy into it. And I get way more ROI than some of my other platforms. I'm looking at you, TikTok. I love you. (laughs) But it is so challenging to draw a direct line from that platform to growing my business. Whereas LinkedIn, it's easy peasy. Now, I do want to note that um, in our podcasts and in my Savvy Social School, we always, always recommend that you choose one primary marketing tool and spend 80% of your time there. Now, I'm the only exception to this rule because I study social media. But for my business owners out there, my marketers out there, where you're learning this for yourself, for your clients, we put 80% of our attention on one marketing tool and then 20% on the other social media platform. So if LinkedIn is it for you, great. I hope this episode can help you figure that out. If it's not LinkedIn, then you may want to choose a different platform and focus on that. Now, if you're new to LinkedIn, link the LinkedIn of yesteryear... <laughs> was basically one giant resume. Do y'all remember this? We were just out here in these LinkedIn streets posting our basically job history. Here's where I worked. This is the success that I got at this job. Hire me for this, that, and the other thing. And LinkedIn of today, it's a little different. With the rise of personal brands, LinkedIn has really exploded as a platform for those of you who want to professionally network with those in your space. So you're building your network of professionals. And the rise of personal brands has really seen a a really dynamic shift into more people using LinkedIn as a tool to grow their personal brand. And on that note, LinkedIn is really just a great platform to share, collaborate, network. I find that if you're looking for someone specific, you can find them on LinkedIn. Whereas if you try to look them up on Instagram or on Facebook, you don't really have the same vibe as LinkedIn. One of the cool things about LinkedIn too is that most people have their email notifications still turned on, something that's automatically with this app. A lot of apps do it, but this app specifically, if someone sends you a connection request or a direct message, you get an email from LinkedIn and then you go log back into the app. And so it feels a little less um, direct than emailing someone, but you're still getting that notification and you're getting in front of them. Now... I was reading this article on chief.com all about the rise of the LinkedIn influencer. And one of the folks interviewed in this article said that LinkedIn influencers are really showing people on the platform that you can be yourself. It doesn't have to be stuffy and buttoned up. They go on to say that you can be vulnerable, talk about what's important to you and project a level of vulnerability on this platform that maybe others wouldn't think you kept. So when you're thinking about LinkedIn, 
I want you to kind of dismiss that um, professional buttoned up need to be all polished and dive into sharing personal storytelling and, and really diving into that platform. So let's talk about what's new on LinkedIn. That's kind of the LinkedIn overview. This year, LinkedIn made a lot of changes. And for those of you who are in my um, Savvy Social School program, you got access to the Feed Podcast. So the Feed Podcast is a super secret private podcast where I talk about all of the social media updates. And y'all heard it all for LinkedIn, both last year in 2021 and this year, this past year in 2022. LinkedIn has made a ton of improvements to their platform. In 2021, that was all about diversity. They introduced more conversation tools like LinkedIn polls and they introduced LinkedIn newsletters. In 2022, LinkedIn newsletters really took off. They really saw a lot of traction, both from people starting newsletters and people consuming newsletters. So what this means for business owners is that if you want to reach more people with your message, you may want to consider a LinkedIn newsletter. LinkedIn also doubled down on their creator program. So they introduced the LinkedIn creator program in 2021. And then in 2022, it really took off. In fact, we have two of our clients who are in the LinkedIn creator program. And it's just like creator programs on other platforms where LinkedIn actually pays you to produce content. Um, But the value of this creator program is number one, it's not as... um, large as some of the other creator programs. So I find that, you know, when we're looking at the content, it doesn't look like influencers made it. What I mean by that is it feels more relatable to me. I find the creator programs on Facebook or on Instagram really seem to be geared towards maybe a younger generation or a more influencer generation versus a business type person. Whereas on LinkedIn, I feel like I really relate to the creators. Maybe that's just me. LinkedIn is also focusing on helping creators build followings versus building a network of connection. And so when we think about this in terms of the shift that's happening on social media, we can see that LinkedIn is leaning more into creating a following instead of connection. So one of the things about LinkedIn is, you know, you send someone a connection, they accept that connection, and then you can start interacting. Whereas now, um, if you just follow someone, you can view and interact with their posts. You don't necessarily have to have that accepted connection request. So LinkedIn shifted that focus this year by releasing new features for LinkedIn creators and um, really building out their creator program. Now, I'm using the term creator here. Here, and they do have a creator program that they pay people to use, but they also have a creator mode. So you can actually turn your profile into creator mode and get a ton of other features. Highly recommend that as well. Um, LinkedIn also released a few things that really are um, helping people become discovered. So one of my favorite things about LinkedIn is... The discovery piece is built into how it works. You know, when we think about apps like Instagram or Facebook, especially pre 2020, um, you really had to follow someone in order to see their content. So you had to go find their page, follow them, see their content. LinkedIn has always had this uh, discoverability feature built in where if you like and comment on someone's page, your interactions help that person's post be seen. So that means if someone likes and comments on your page, it really helps your page be seen as well. Pages or profiles. Now this year, LinkedIn released their discovery feed. So I'm going to play for you a piece of the feed podcast. so You can hear all about that new feature. Now, if we look at social media as a whole, this update isn't surprising. A lot of social media platforms are having this ability for their members, their users to discover new content. I think this is an echo of the shift that TikTok made to the social media landscape. When you log on, your your For You page is full of people you don't know, so you can discover new content. We're seeing Instagram, Facebook go that direction as well. 
So it's not surprising that LinkedIn is starting to play around with this feature. Now they're testing it out. But the reason I wanted to bring this to you as a business owner is this is great news for you. We want people to find our content. We want people who don't know us to discover us. So with this new feed, there is a higher chance of users who do not know you to discover your content. There are so many other features that LinkedIn released this year, like in-app scheduling, image carousel posts clickable links in bio, business manager. I talk about this all in the feed podcast. So if you want access to that, (laughs) I talk about this all in the feed podcast. If you want access to that, make sure you're in the Savvy Social School. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about some foundational elements to leveling up your LinkedIn strategy in 2023. And I'm going to talk about what's trending on that platform this year. We'll be back soon. Hey friends, are you looking to level up your LinkedIn game in 2023? If you are, I want to invite you to my free, yes, free LinkedIn challenge happening this January. The LinkedIn Jumpstart Challenge is your fast pass to some pro-level LinkedIn skills. In just five days, you'll be able to take your profile, completely revitalize it, go from meh to amazing, and create some authority building content that will convert your followers into sales and new business. And no, we are not using some sleazy DM strategies here. I'm talking to you, the guy from Minnesota who one time tried to sell me solar panels. Dude, we're not even in the same country. We're not being that guy. So if you're ready to really take your authority to the next level using LinkedIn, join us today. You can find the link at onlinedrea.com slash LinkedIn. I'll see you there. Bye for now. All right. So if you're starting in with LinkedIn this year, here are three super actionable tips that can really help get things kicked off for you. And as mentioned, I do have a LinkedIn challenge. So make sure you join that for free to get even more tips. But tip number one is to use an intention grabbing statement. Think of this as a headline. So when we think about your LinkedIn profile, when you're scrolling through the feed, LinkedIn kind of truncates your posts. So you got to have to tap on read more or see more, whatever it is, to actually read the rest of the post. So you got to have that hook, that attention grabbing statement right up top. Ask yourself, why would someone read this? Why would someone click read more or see more? If you can answer that question, boom, you have an amazing LinkedIn post. And this works no matter what's trending, which we'll talk about trending themes in a moment. But if you can have that hook, Boom, you've caught people in. Um, the second thing that you want to do on LinkedIn is think about using your personal profile versus your page. And in most cases, your personal profile is the better option over your page. Now, there is a strategy for LinkedIn pages. There's a place and a time for LinkedIn pages. But for the most part, we recommend focusing on growing your network using your personal profile on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn actually rewards people who use your personal profile. The last tip for you uh, for using LinkedIn in 2023 is to actually use a platform. Like use it. Like scroll through the feed. Comment. Like. Don't just post and ghost. Do y'all know what I mean when I say post and ghost? You type up your beautiful post. You hit publish on LinkedIn, then you immediately log out and go do something else. Okay. That is not the best way to use LinkedIn. We actually want you to engage on the platform. And again, LinkedIn rewards users, just like every platform. LinkedIn rewards users who actually use the platform. That means you're actually networking. You're building your network. You're, you're being in community with your fellow folks there on LinkedIn. Those are some foundational tips for LinkedIn. They will really help kickstart or restart your LinkedIn strategy. But let's talk about what's working here now, 2023, some trends and themes that we're seeing on LinkedIn. Now, there are a lot of things happening in the wider social media scope that we'll see really focused on LinkedIn tends to be focused on work and business. And I'm going to link to an article in the show notes that you can check out from LinkedIn's content director themselves um, that you can check out as well. Um, But this is where I'm pulling these themes from. And the first theme from 2022 that was really trending on LinkedIn that will continue into this year is remote work. 
everyone's talking about remote work. So if you're a business owner, let's say you're a business coach, you're talking on LinkedIn about the value of building a remote team. If you are a yoga instructor, you're on LinkedIn talking about your virtual yoga classes. If you are a speaker, you are on LinkedIn talking about how you can help facilitate sessions through Zoom. These remote work conversations are trending right now. Second trend is the changing state of work culture and the transparency behind work culture. And I talked a lot about a specific thing um, in a episode recently. It's episode 222 called Quiet Quitting, or you can Google online Drea Quiet Quitting and that episode will pop right up. This is an amplification of something that's happening in work culture. And I want to use this example as well because I took a trend, quiet quitting, and I turned it into marketing. Are you quiet quitting your marketing? So again, you can take something that's trending, a conversation that your people are having, and you can reflect on how it works for your business. So if you are an online educator, maybe you're talking about how people are quiet quitting their jobs and they're starting to start their own business to create online courses and you teach people how to do that. Or maybe you are a tax consultant and you're talking about how business owners are quiet quitting um, themselves and they're outsourcing everything so they don't have to be all of the things. And that's why your clients hire you. Whatever the case may be, you're taking trending topics and relating it to what you do. All right. Next trend. Not a surprise. The Ponder Replay. Can't say it because... If I say the big C word, uh, I'll get flagged in the apps because that's not what I'm really talking about. But it, this pandemic is still affecting the way people talk about the world around them. So if it is something that is important to you and to your customers, you absolutely want to show up in that way as well and have those conversations on social media. Um, the Ponder Replay is something that is still so tangible and tactical. And right now, the conversations are talking a lot about economic depression and recession. So when we're thinking about our customers, our clients, the people we're talking to on LinkedIn, we probably want to create some content that addresses their concerns, the economic downturn, the lasting lingering effects of this global situation that we're in. Um, we definitely want to talk about that on LinkedIn. The next topic that is trending on LinkedIn is empathy and leadership. And if y'all have not read Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. I feel like I recommend this book all of the time because it changed the way I showed up as a leader. I used to be a one strike, you're out kind of leader. That means if someone messed up on my team, I was like, boop, you're done. You're done. And that's not really a great way to lead. It really be breeds fear among your current team. It doesn't create room for growth. And it's just kind of rude. So baby Andrea and her business would make those decisions. The more mature Andrea <laughs> makes better decisions. And a lot of that is because of the Brene Brown book, Dare to Lead, and all of the leadership coaching I've been getting over the years. And so if I'm showing up on LinkedIn, I'm going to talk about this and the power of empathy and leadership. And so I want you to think about how you can show up with this trending topic in your business. It's no longer about being, you know, perfectly polished, the best at everything. It's about admitting your mistakes and being able to show your growth from there. The last point kind of ties into this, which is artificial intelligence. Y'all, I talked about this in my predictions episode for the year. And I'll admit, I am scared of artificial intelligence. Now I'm still studying it. And I'm seeing a few ways that, you know, I kind of already use it in some ways. And, um, you know, I, <laughs> I don't really like that it's coming for my job. But artificial intelligence is a hot topic right now. So it's definitely something that we want to talk about on LinkedIn and find ways to tie it into what you do. But and you know, I'm still exploring this myself, non-perfect leader over here. Uh, but I saw a post and I tried to look for it and I could not find it, but I saw a post about um 
one of these artificial intelligence kind of caption generators for LinkedIn. And it said something like, write a LinkedIn post that makes me feel slightly superior, talks about my hustle culture, my $10 million business, and how I, you know, sleep four hours a night, work up at 5 a.m. You know, that vibe, very much that vibe. And the generator pushed out this post where I was like, oh, I've seen that on LinkedIn. (laughs) So while I absolutely love LinkedIn, I do want to leave you with a little bit of a cautionary tale about the downside of LinkedIn, which is there are a lot of people just like on every platform. There are a lot of people using LinkedIn to be scammy, to promote themselves, to glamorize their lives. And we all see these posts. We all see these people. Um, However, um, we don't have to participate in that level of conversation. This all came from this idea of artificial intelligence. Okay. So when we think about LinkedIn, 2023, it's going to be such a powerful way for you to grow your business. I'm super excited to share two amazing conversations with you about LinkedIn because I want to show you an example of what's possible on the platform. And next week, I have the fabulous Shannon Siriano Greenwood coming on. She's a past client and a fantastic LinkedIn creator. I'm super excited to bring that episode to you next week. So stay tuned. I'll see you then. Bye for now. Oh.